right, so we're going to move on to the next topic. And this one's kind of off the wall, but I read this article and I thought it was really interesting. And I think we can uh, get a little bit of uh, kind of conversation in about it because it's so weird and interesting. So uh, let's switch over to the article here. This is from freethink.com. Whatever happened to the first cryogenically frozen human? So like in sci-fi, we always see like, well, I guess uh, it's going to be about five years to get to such and such place. I'm going to go on to cryo sleep. And I don't know why they have a deep Southern accent, but that's this literally how I imagine. Makes, this literally uh, just it, makes me think about Bill of J. Fry. Did you uh, change your audio uh, input or something? You sound kind of echoey there, Sloobs. Because I'm further away from the mic. Oh, there you go. There you go. So I'm going to go ahead and read this. Uh... For, uh, I see Wiener. Oh, crud. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm pretty sure they talk about that in here. But anyway. All right. So <clears throat> several facilities in the U.S. and abroad maintain more morbid warehouse morgues full of frozen human heads and bodies waiting for the future they are part of a story that is ghoulish darkly humorous i don't know why but and yet <laughs> endearingly sincere for a small group of fervent futurists it is their lottery ticket to immortality what are the chances that these bodies will be reanimated will baseball legend ted williams's frozen head be awakened to coach fighter pilots or fused to a robot body to hit um 40 again or 400 whatever you want to call it a primer on cryonics cryonics attempting to cryo preserve the human body is widely considered a pseudoscience Cryopreservation is a legitimate scientific endeavor in which cells, organs, or in rare cases, entire organisms may be cooled to extremely low temperatures and revived somewhat intact. It occurs in nature, but only in limited cases. Humans are particularly difficult to preserve because of the delicate structure in most of our heads. Deprived of oxygen at room temperature, the brain dies within minutes. While the body may be reanimated, the person who lives is often in a permanent vegetative state. You know, kind of like me after Thanksgiving. But uh, cooling the body may give the brain a bit more time. During brain or heart surgery, circulation may be stopped for up to an hour with the body cooled to 20 degrees Celsius or for us uh, Yanks, 68 degrees Fahrenheit, a procedure to cool the body to 50 degrees Fahrenheit without oxygen for additional hours is still at the experimental research stage. When a cryonic patient dies, a race begins to prepare and cool the body before it decays and then to place it inside a dewar, a thermos bottle full of liquid nitrogen. Uh, <laughs> the inner vessel of the dewar contains a body or bodies wrapped in several layers of insulating material attached to a stretcher and suspended in liquid nitrogen. The head is oriented downward to keep the brain the coldest and most stable. This vessel lies within a second outer vessel separated by a vacuum to avoid heat transfer from the outer room temperature vessel wall to the cold inner vessel wall. Heat gradually transfers across anyway and boils away the liquid nitrogen which must be periodically refilled. Bodies were originally and may still be in some cases cooled and frozen in whatever condition they were in at death with better or worse preservation as we shall see. So let's uh, get to the grisly fates of the first cryonauts. Uh, this is getting kind of uh, uh, a little bit weird here. So the early years of cryonics were grisly. All but one of the first frozen futurists failed in their quest for immortality. Small freezing operations began in, in the late 1960s. While the practice of storing bodies has become more sophisticated over the past 50 years, in the early days, technicians cooled and prepared corpses with haste on dry ice before eventually cramming them into Dewar capsules. By and large, these quote-unquote preservations did not achieve preservation. They were nightmarish, gruesome failures. Their stories were researched and documented by people within the field who published thorough and frank records. Uh, the largest operation was run out of a cemetery in Chatsworth, California by a man named Robert Nelson. 
four of his first clients were not initially and the, frozen. And the records are just, I just got to be frank with you. This is fucked up. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I agree 100%. I mean, a, 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 like a cybernetic coach, that's like a Terminator coach for you. <laughs> Work harder. Work harder. <laughs> Hit that ball. <laughs> So Hit the ball now! four of his first clients were not initially frozen in uh, liquid nitrogen, but placed on a bed of dry ice in a mortuary. One of these bodies was a woman whose son decided to take her body back. He hauled his dead mother around in a truck on dry ice for some time before <laughs> burying her. Oh, man. <laughs> It's like, what? hey man, he it's... he he pulls up to a hitchhiker. He's just like, I got room, but you got to hang in the back. <laughs> and then the hitchhiker asks like this, like, what's with that? Oh, they screw me over. So I just want my body back. That's what's going on right now in the back. It's like, ah, it's just my mom. <laughs> Don't worry That's about it. Just remember, Don't worry about it. <laughs> I just remember you're on thin ice, buddy. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> so <laughs> eventually the mortician was not pleased with the other bodies sitting around on beds of ice. So a liquid nitrogen Dewar capsule was secured for the remaining three. Another man was already frozen and sealed inside the capsule. So it was opened and he was removed. Nelson and the mortician then spent the entire night figuring out how to jam four people who may or may not have suffered thaw damage into the capsule. The arrangement of bodies in different orientations was described as a quote unquote puzzle. After They're damaged. <laughs> after They're damaged. An, ar an arrangement that worked. I'm just imagining, like, oh, uh, the resealed that, capsule was imagine they, imagine they actually do, like, manage to re resuscitate or revive those people. <laughs> and they got to find out that they were jammed in a, a tube. <laughs> For centuries, naked, pressed against somebody else for fucking right. hundreds of years. Right. Dude, I want to feel bad for the guy who accidentally got shoved right next to that girl's ass. <laughs> so, uh, after finding an arrangement that worked, the resealed capsule was lowered into an underground vault at the cemetery. Nelson claimed to have refilled it sporadically for about a year before he stopped receiving money from the relatives. After a while, he let the bodies thaw out inside the capsule and left the whole thing festering in his vault. Another group of three, including an eight-year-old girl, what? interesting. Oh my, was, my god. Was packed into I'm a second like this one. Was packed into a second capsule in the Chatsworth, Chatsworth vault. The uh, liquid nitrogen system of this capsule subsequently failed without Nelson noticing. Okay. Oh my god. Upon checking one day, he saw that everyone in inside had long thought out. The fate of these ruined bodies is unclear, but they might have been refrozen for several more years. Nelson froze a six-year-old boy in 1974. What the capsule the? itself was well-maintained by the boy's father, but when it was opened, the boy's body was found to be cracked. The cracking could have occurred if the body was frozen too quickly by the liquid nitrogen. The boy was then thawed, embalmed, and buried. Now... That there was a vacancy, a different man was placed into the leftover capsule, but ten months had elapsed between his death and freezing, so his body was in rotten shape. No pun intended. Ew. From oh the get-go, and was eventually thawed. What Ever is this Mr. Freeze <laughs> right? BS, man? <laughs> How does he even, like, ever... He's just all like, hey, anybody want their bodies frozen? Anybody want some bodies frozen? Like, how does he even <laughs> advertise this? I think I, I, think I saw Craig, Craigslist ad like this one time. <laughs> I feel bad for that boy. Oh, he, I don't know why. He's dead. <laughs> Every cryonic client put into the vault at Chatsworth um, and looked at after by Nelson eventually failed. These bodies inside the Dewar capsules were simply left to rot. Reporters visited the crypt where these failed operations had taken place and reported a horrifying stench. The proprietor yeah. admitted to failure, bad decisions, and going broke. <laughs> <laughs> he further pointed out, who can guarantee that you're going to be suspended for 10 or 15 years? Come on, man. The worst of fates have all occurred at a similar underground vault that stored bodies at a cemetery in Butler, New, New Jersey. 
Oh God! <laughs> the storage oh, drawer. Not that place. <laughs> the I, I, okay. Okay. One problem I see with there... this is I feel like a lot of these people were overestimating the ability within ten or fifteen years of us like perfecting this technology. Right. Like, I'm gonna feel in the, like... in the seventies. Can you imagine being like, yeah, we'll have flying cars and we'll be able to unfreeze dead right. people? Dude, didn't <laughs> like... you see Star Wars? I mean, come on, man. <laughs> I'm gonna feel like New Jersey's might be the worstest one than the than California. Well, it says the New Jersey hey. one. The storage dewar was poorly designed with uninsulated pipes. Oh, okay, that seems like Jersey to me. <laughs> Why do you think I think Jersey's gonna be the bad one? I'm getting I'm getting cryogenically frozen on a budget, right? <laughs> Just, just uh, blast me with those, uh, those, uh, those cans of air. You know how they get cold. Yeah. <laughs> just keep blasting. <laughs> just turn a bunch of pressurized cans right. upside down. This led to a series of incidents. We're calling it. At least one of which was failure of the vacuum. Lightly. <laughs> which was failure of the vacuum jacket insulating the inside. The bodies of what? in the container partially thawed moved and then froze again stuck to the capsule like a child's tongue to a cold <laughs> lamp post <laughs> and then she... what? this is more darker than the other lane Eventually... stop wait wait i'm the sorry box... i need to say something right now so there is a vacuum jack then <laughs> it's all I from the inside of you. the bodies <laughs> what the I want to say the F word, but I can't. I don't. I don't know. Eventually, the bodies had to be entirely thawed to unstick, then refrozen and put back in. Why? A year later, the duar failed again, and the bodies decomposed into a quote a plug of fluids oh in the bottom God. of the capsule. <laughs> the decision was finally made to thaw the entire contraption, scrape out the remains, and bury them. The men who performed Ew. this unfortunate task had to wear a breathing apparatus. <laughs> of course, it probably stank like, stank like a damn rat, rat hole. Like a rat hole. So it had to have been awful. It okay. was awful. So out of all those frozen prior to 1973, one body remains preserved. Robert Bedford... <laughs> was sealed into a dewar in 1967. Instead of leaving the body to meet a horrific fate under Nelson's care, Bedford's family took custody of the capsule, meticulously caring for it at their own expense. The body was handed off between professional cryonics operations, occupying multiple frozen tanks and facilities for 15 years or so, eventually ended up in the hands of the founders of Alcor, a modern cryonics outfit. Um, one of whom wrote a heartfelt, slightly creepy piece about the body. Oh, this is not. I have well. to see that. I didn't actually. I, I was... Oh boy. Oh. Oh my oh, gosh! God. This is really long. This is. It's a so novel. Sad. That's the whoa! Castle. Look at this. Look, look at that thing. It's big. opening. I thought it was a pill. Look at this. What? Uh, that's the they're, body. They're putting him in. They're putting, they're putting a. It looks like a dark, giant bro. propane tank. <laughs> it looked like it looked like a big, It looked like a big bullet to me. Wow. Well, anyway, let's go back here. That is just that. Uh, that whole operation looks like something your uncle right. might do in his garage right. or something. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't look high speed or anything. Um, it looks like it's just a bunch of just nothing but a tin filled with nitrogen. Well, you're the, you're the cryogenicist. I'm just going right. to go and trust you. <laughs> <laughs> Alcor is the leading example of the current state of cryonics. While the ugly events above suggest that your remains might well end up as tissue sludge scraped out of a can. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> The Ew. professionalism of companies like Alcor now, may I, offer. Now I say now that is dark. <laughs> that is dark. <laughs> Uh, Alcor may offer an increased chance for long-term preservation. The 501c3 organization hosts researchers who work on methods to improve the freezing process, possibly increasing whatever slight odds exist that human popsicles will ever be brought back to life. At a more fundamental level, it appears to be stable uh, and to have deep pockets, so there is a better chance that your corpse will be around long enough for some distant future doctor to recoil in horror at it. 
What, the U.S. What industry. Do do? Um, what do you do for a living? Oh, I practice freezing shit all the time to find right. out what happens later. <laughs> right. I'm gonna write the okay, results down. Okay, pause it. Pause it. So, are you saying that in the future they're gonna put like? Frozen dead bodies in horror movies. I I think that this is like we're 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 currently reading the origin story for an actual Mister Freeze in the future. Oh my! He's going to be the the CEO of this cryonics institute. Hope we have a we hope we have a realistic Batman. <laughs> the U S. Indus- for us for that. The U S. industry is consolidated around two main organizations. If not Alcor, the other choice is Cryonics Institute, which has more than two hundred bodies stored in giant tanks and accepts dozen more each dozens more each year. Apparently, ten years ago, head storage alone at Alcor cost eighty thousand dollars, while full body storage at the Cryonics Institute was only thirty thousand. Wow, that's <laughs> what a savings. What's what's included in that eighty k like? I don't we know. Attach your head, we we attach your head to something else once we <laughs> once we thaw you out. They'd probably just agree to freeze it, I guess. But uh, there are international options as well. A Russian cryogenics company stores not only people but pets, including one entry under rodents: a deceased chinchilla named Button. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I really love a chinchilla to freeze it. Does it, it look like a day. button? <laughs> yeah. Modern cryonic preparations for Alcor employ a multi-step process to prepare the body for storage. First, they begin to cool the body while anti-clotting agents and organ preservation solutions are injected into the bloodstream and circulated under CPR. The body is then oh transported God. to the company's main facility, where the original fluid is placed in with chemicals that vitrify turn to glass the body's organs this offers some hope for cutting down on structural damage during the subsequent cooling and storage then the body is entombed in its duar cap- capsule so is cryonic science or making human popsicles yes that all sounds scientific and careful but is it really science or just applying scientific tools to a fantasy proposition is it possible to freeze the human body and revive it decades later Currently, it's not remotely plausible. Will it ever be? That's probably an open question. As it stands now, cryonics is a bizarre intersection of scientific thinking and wishful thinking. While cryonic preparation is now more advanced, the laws of physics demand that the structure of the body will break down rapidly after death, catastrophically upon freezing, and gradually over time, even while frozen. Think of how badly frozen food ages in your freezer. If the medical technology of the future becomes advanced enough, perhaps these corpses can be revived, but that's a big if. Let's say your body remains frozen until the 25th century. Then let's say that future doctors are interested in reviving you. How much work will they have to do to fix you once you're thawed? The answer lies in the condition of the bodies once they're thawed. Strangely enough, we know something about this. 1983, Alcorn needed to lighten three cryonauts, reducing them from bodies to simply heads. In one transhumanist conception of the future, medical science will be able to revive the brain and then simply make a new body or robot in which to attach it. Neuropreservation is cheaper and easier, too. The three corpses were removed from their Dwar capsules so that the heads could be cut off, still frozen, so requiring a chainsaw, (laughs) and stored separately. That's a very Um, exact medical tool. Right? Um... Once the heads were sawed off and put away, Alcor employees got to work medically examining the state of the bodies. They wrote up in their findings in great detail. At first, at first, things looked reasonably good. While the bodies were still frozen, their skin was not only moderately cracked in a few places, but once the bodies thawed, things started to go downhill. Cracks appeared in the warming bodies, cutting through the skin and subcutaneous fat all the way down the body wall or muscle surface beneath one patient displayed red traces across the skin following the pass of blood vessels that ruptured two of the patients had massive cutaneous ruptures over the pubis the soft skin in these areas was apparently quite susceptible to cracking Uh, while the external damage was extensive the internal damage was worse nearly every organ system inside the bodies was fractured in one patient every major blood vessel had broken near the heart the lungs and spleen were almost bisected, and the intestines fractured extensively. Only the liver and kidneys weren't completely uh, destroyed. The third body, which had been thawed very slowly, was in better condition externally, with only a few skin fractures and no obvious exploded blood vessels. However, the inside was even more annihilated than the others. The organs were badly cracked or severed. The spinal cord was snapped into three pieces, and the heart was fractured. The examiners injected dye into an artery in the arm rather than flow through the blood vessels into muscles. Most of it pooled under the surface in pockets and leaked out of skin fractures. 
Medical examiners extensively detailed the content of the blood, the texture of the muscles, and the extent of the damage. They included pictures, and they earnestly stated their conclusions up front. The tremendous tissue deterioration will require incredibly advanced medical technology to fix. Worse, the probable destruction at the cellular level may require rebuilding the body at the molecular level. Perhaps future medicine might be able to inject swarms of nanobots in your body to repair every bit of tissue, but don't bet on it happening anytime soon. So while the chances of immortality may be slim, dozens of people still commit their bodies or brains to cryonics each year. If their remains aren't mismanaged or allowed to disintegrate, and if their relatives don't go to court over the body, there is now a good chance that they will remain frozen for decades. Unfortunately, they will come out of the process cracked into a million pieces, and the prospect of putting them back together again is purely science fiction for the civilian foreseeable future it's a grim practice with ghoulish results at least it makes for some fascinating stories and a bit of dark humor so what do you guys think um <clears throat> well i'm a specialist for one <laughs> two why do they need a chainsaw because i already know they're gonna slip up and cut off that dude's arm yeah and he wakes up saying what happened to my arm and they'd be like <laughs> Well, in your in our in your anger, you lost your. That doesn't make any sense. I was frozen in time. <laughs> this is like, why are you complaining? Now we can call you Torso Boy. <laughs> <laughs> so boy. <laughs> that's a cool nickname. Come on. But uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I didn't. I guess realize that this was a normal thing but apparently it's been going on for decades and decades yeah so i'm assuming they haven't frozen anybody that's still alive right except for that dude it's gonna be like a terminator coach <laughs> <laughs> but i mean right. like i don't know this is definitely one of those things where i feel like people are signing up for something where it's like yeah i know it's not gonna work like imagine your business model is like yeah we haven't figured it out yet but we're still set like these gay guys are basically like game they have an unfinished product that they're selling to people <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like yeah we'll fix it later um, we'll I'm figure it out bro. Later. i'm still shocked <laughs> about i'm still shocked about where the um where the, he shoved the like four bodies in one capsule <laughs> right do you have any idea how much bodies are sticked by each other <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine there's got to be at some point where some dude was asked, like, who was still alive, and they're like, hey, can we test this cryostasis on you? And he's like, fuck it, I ain't got any weekend plans. And <laughs> I'm just imagining the... And then they just, they just forgot them. about him. And yeah. I'm just and imagining three, two, bodies, year 3001. two bodies getting stuck together, and they got to, like, break them apart with a spatula. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's I'm just saying that happens to the sausage patties I cook, and it's kind of a, a tough problem to deal with. And I do rem oh, Okay, so this was so that last story they have on there about the guy in the ice shed. Uh, I've actually read about that story before, where um, somebody was basically like, it was kind of like that other story where they got tired of paying for the cryogenics, so they just basically were like, yeah, just drop the tube off at my house, and the dude kept it in a shed behind his house for like 20 years or something like that and just <laughs> kept going out there packing dry ice into it. Um, Gross. it was like, it was like the most redneck way. Like it was like basically redneck <laughs> cryogenics, right, but <laughs> right. I still feel bad for that little boy in New Jersey, New Jersey, 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 they're the same thing. Jersey. 